Well, Mike, I mean, you're, you're getting back to work. This is a massive fight card, and obviously people are looking really, really forward to your fight. Give me an idea. What's the, what's the emotion like, the feeling like coming into to this big fight? <clears throat> uh, I don't know, man. I'm trying to stay calmer than ever, and, uh, you know, I got to stop. You know, I don't know. I don't think I let the games that I play get in my way. I try not to let them distract me. And I try to stay focused on the task, which is getting the win. But yeah, you know, I, I kind of got a no-nonsense type of opponent. And uh, so I'm gonna kind of bring that same mentality. You know, it's no nonsense. I actually, you know, I really feel like, you know, it's, it's do or die this weekend. It's life or death. It's kill or be killed. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling very serious, which is hard to like be the fun guy when you're feeling that way. I feel like my whole job's on the line. My life is on the line. So. I was going to ask you what brought you to that realization. I mean, because obviously your dedication to the game, there's no question about it, but people love watching you fight. I think part of, because of some of the antics a little bit sometimes and the fun and the, you know, I mean, have you, what brought you to the realization like, Maybe I need to stay away from that. Well, I mean, I think that it's not just going to happen overnight. So I'm still going to be me. And but I got to say that the broken nose helped uh, that helped, you know, maybe help me take it more serious. It's not like I wasn't taking it serious and and training is still, you know, you know, some days I'm like, geez, it's not like I just want to train harder today because I, my nose got broke last time. It's like, it's the same as it always is. It's like, damn, I got to get to the gym. I got to get this work. This guy's out here training, trying to kill me, you know, so I got to, I got to do the same. And, but like the, the pain and suffering and like, I thought I was going to be a hideous creature after my nose got separated. So I just, you know, the mindset, I don't want to let these guys hurt me. But at the same time, that made me think, oh, okay, forget backing up. Forget trying to stick and move. I'm going to go forward. If I'm going to bleed, then I'm going to cover you in my blood. I'm going to bleed all over you. Because if I'm going to get hit and I can take it, I might as well just go forward and show you that you can't push me back. So. So was that broken nose, like some kind of like realization of mortality or something? I mean, like, was it something that changed you? Like, what it's was funny. it? It's funny that you say that because like I, I said it yesterday. I was like, I'm, I feel like I'm more human than I've ever felt. You know, I'm like, dang, you know, I break. And pain, pain has always been there. And it's like how I deal with it that makes me maybe different, but... <clears throat> You know, and, and I did get something good out of it. Like now, my nose goes completely flat. Like, so if you hit me in the nose, I don't think you can do anything. Look at that thing. It's flat to my face. <laughs> Well, it's funny. I mean, listen, I mean, one and one this year, but two fights of the night, right? I mean, uh, wars, entertainment. I mean, I think your star power is as big as ever, even if you didn't get the win. So how would you evaluate your year? I mean, you got the extra paychecks. You, you, you got the fans. But you didn't get the two wins. You didn't go two and zero. So is that is that a failure? Um, well, to me, I've only lost one professional MMA fight in my life, and that was Cowboy Cerrone. He took my arm home with him, and we didn't even fight. You know, I didn't show up that night at all. I didn't make it out of the first round. Nobody got hit, and that just it just didn't feel like me. And uh, you know, just all the things going on in my life outside of fighting really distracted me from fighting. So now, nowadays, it's like I've accepted where I am in life. This is a huge opportunity and a huge part of my life. So uh, my life is fighting, fighting is my life. And um, you know, I, it's me and my wife and fighting is life. And we're out here, you know, we're doing much more than surviving. We're gonna press forward and we're gonna bleed if we have to and, and we're not going to take a step back so you know I'm here to to show the world truly how tough I am and and um, you know that means more than just taking it that means giving it too. 
Jeff Neal, you said he's a no-nonsense guy, but he made it clear he wanted this fight with you. Nothing personal. I think he just thinks it'll be a fun fight. So what do you think of him? I mean, when somebody's kind of asking for you, I mean, do you respect that? Do you dislike that? What, what do you think about him? No, I, uh, I respect it. I mean, he's accomplished something that I haven't been able to accomplish necessarily how I put my fights together. And that's a poor fight win streak in the UFC. Uh, but we're talking for UFC fights versus 11 UFC fights now. So I'm hoping, and you know, and hope don't get you far. It's hard work to get you far, but I'm hoping we see a, a difference in my experience over his. And um, you know, a lot of people call me out, so um, I'm grateful for that, though. Um, you know, that means I'm doing something right. And, and it's funny because the callouts kind of just go up in the air a lot of the times, and they don't really come to fruition. Uh, there have been a very, uh, like Darren Till and okay. Matt, the Immortal Brown, and these, these big names have called me out. And, uh, you know, I've called out Robbie, and it just, and I've even done it on the mic in a really big way that the fans really got behind it and they really want to see that, but it's just not coming together. So, you know, good for this guy. He's on that four fight win streak. He made, uh, he made his call out happen for himself. Maybe it's time he learned a lesson. Uh, I know a lesson that I've definitely learned is like, you know, be weary, be careful what you ask for. And, and at the same time, I'm sure he understands that and he's ready and we're gonna throw down. It, it is what it is at the end of the day. That's why I gotta let the, all the pressures go and just be like, man, I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna fight and wear my heart on my sleeve. And again, we're gonna throw down. It's definitely a different Mike Perry than we're used to seeing before a fight. So what about once inside the cage, once that door closes, it's locked, and you guys are ready to go, are we seeing something different there, or, or, or are we seeing just kind of more of the same? <clears throat> no telling, man. I mean, it's a, it's a balance. There was, if you take my last fight, there was a lot of sticking and moving, and there was a moment in the fight when I told myself, go forward. And then I was like, ah, oh, I'm just... I'm gonna just keep bouncing around. I felt pretty safe that way. And I've, I've been watching a couple fights lately and I, I saw the guy who was backing up, for example, and no offense, the, the big guy, Alistair Overeem. He was winning the fight, but then when it came down to the end of the fight and he tried to skate away to his victory by decision, look what happened, you know? So. There comes a point in fighting where you gotta put your foot down, you gotta tuck your chin, you gotta go forward, and you gotta show this guy that he's not as tough as you, and he can't push you back, and you push him back. So, you know, we're still gonna get some of the old Mike Perry, some of the new Mike Perry, and then there's gonna be a totally different Mike Perry in there on Saturday. I know you said no pre-fight antics, but you did take a little shot at Kobe Covington on Instagram, right, on social media. What, what was the motivation behind uh, putting him on blast for his kisses in the clinch? Mm -hmm. Distraction from, for him, distractions for my opponent, uh, distractions for what the crowd can expect from the fight on Saturday, and, and also just because... You know, he's a very hateful person and I wanted to say, I had an idea to say some things that I'm sure might have upset him, made him angry that he thinks people think that he fights uh, like a little kissy smoochy boy. And, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, no offense to men who kiss men, but, you know, Colby's one of them. And, like I said, no offense, and it got some likes on Instagram. I thought it might people. People don't really say a lot about him because they don't want to give him any attention. And, you know, that was some attention that I was happy to give him. You know, give credit where credit is due. Ideal for you, man, if you could choose two paths five years from now, you're either UFC welterweight champion or maybe you've gone 500, but every fight's been a fight of the night bonus. You're the biggest star. People are like, I love Mike Perry. I don't care if he wins or loses, man. I just want to watch this dude go throw down every time. You're everybody's favorite fighter. Or you, you fight safe and you're a world champion over here, which, 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 which means more to you? Well, I don't think fighting safe is going to get me the world title. So I'll take 
uh, I don't really know what you meant by 500, but I, <laughs> I, I like the sound of it. I'll take the bonuses. Uh, I'll put the shows on for the people, man. I want the people behind me. That's really what I need. But I need the wins, and and I think I get that by not being safe, by pressing forward, tucking my chin, and bringing the fight to these guys. Like, I know I can. Nice. Well, I think this everybody's excited for this one. So, Saturday night, you play this one out in your head. What, what are we seeing out there? Are we, are we seeing a battle? Are we seeing you go get things done quick? What, what, what are we going to see? <clears throat> Shoot. Motherfucker's going to bleed. That's for sure. <laughs> 